Hi, today we are going to be practicing annotating and finding evidence in the text in order to answer a question. So here we have a piece of text. And as you can see, the title is The Plant Doctor. I'm just going to let you take a look at the actual text. Okay. Now, when you are given a piece of text to take a look at, the first thing you need to do is to take a look at the text and graphic features. Text and graphic features are ways that authors um, add in sort of extra things to help you to understand what it is you're reading. Text features could include titles, headings, highlighted words. Um, graphic features could include pictures. Um, it can include diagrams, things of that nature. Um, but again, that's what you should look for. So we see here, we got a couple of pictures. And in looking at these text features, we can say, hmm, let's make a prediction what this story is about. I see this man here. And it says that his name is George Washington Carver. This story must be about George Washington Carver. It must have something to do with peanuts and ooh, even farming. Okay, so now that we've taken a look at our text and graphic features, we can then go on. Um, if they give you some vocabulary, sort of like in a box or, or maybe down at the bottom of the page, you might want to take a look at that vocabulary to make sure that you know what the definitions are of the particular words. They don't do that every time, but usually when it is informational text, meaning text that is factual, they, um, the author usually gives you words um, that they want you to make sure that you understand before you start reading. So if we look at the first one, a scientist, we know that a scientist is someone that tries to understand basically how the world works and how things work. The word agriculture, that has to do with farming, um, planting and raising crops and even uh, raising animals. Discrimination, we've talked about discrimination, especially in social studies. That's when you know people are not treated um, fairly. Um, and it's usually because they are in a particular group. For example, um, in the United States, uh, often African-Americans are treated unfairly. Um, there are times when uh, people who um, are in a certain religion, they are treated unfairly, so on and so forth. Uh, the next word is slavery. And a sla slavery is when a person is held or quote unquote owned um, and they are made to work for free and they are uh, treated uh, very cruelly. Next word is productive. Productive is someone who is uh, doing quite a bit. OK, they have the, cap the capability to do a lot. And then circumstances, your circumstances are sort of, I would say, the details surrounding a situation or a condition and it causes something to occur. Alrighty, so let's go ahead and the next thing that we're going to do now that we've looked at these words that the author wanted us to highlight is we're going to go ahead and just read the text one time through. So here we go. This first text feature here, which is the title of our article, The Plant Doctor. George Washington Carver was an agricultural scientist who became one of America's most well-known inventors. His accomplishments are even more remarkable when we learn how his life began. George certainly did not have an easy start to life. He was born into slavery just one year before it was made illegal in America. As a child, he lived with his mother's precious, I'm sorry, previous owners, the Carvers, who owned a farm in Missouri. There, Mrs. Carver taught him how to read and write and how to work the land. From a young age, George was naturally curious. He loved art, music, and science. He was especially interested in farming and enjoyed in experiencing with soil and plants. He had a knack for understanding how to protect crops from pests and diseases. He became, he became so skilled that neighboring farmers recruited him to help them with their orchards and farms. George soon became known in the area as the plant doctor. 
Though he was already quite an expert at a young age, Carver was hungry to learn more. I wanted to know the name of everything, he said, every stone and flower and insect, insect and bird and beast. I wanted to know where it got its color and where it got its life, but there was no one to tell me. At age 11, Carver left the farm to seek his education elsewhere. For the next 10 years, Carver attended various schools across the Midwest, working to support himself financially. He faced a lot of discrimination in these years, and he was often turned away from educational opportunities because of his skin color. Eventually, he was accepted at Iowa State College. There, he became the first African-American to earn his master's degree in agriculture. George then left Iowa to teach at a school for black students in Alabama. He wanted to help students rise out of their difficult circumstances. Education, he believed, was the key to unlock the golden door of freedom. In Alabama, he taught farmers a thing or two as well. Carver saw that the Southern soil had been worn out from growing cotton year after year. He believed it could be made healthier by growing other crops during certain seasons. He encouraged farmers to grow peanuts, soybeans, and sweet potatoes. His plan worked perfectly. By rotating crops, the soil became more productive. The plant doctor was alive and well. The local farmers were ecstatic. Not only were their cotton crops better than ever, but they now had a surplus of potatoes and peanuts. Carver also used his creative genius to invent over 150 uses of, I'm sorry, for sweet potatoes, including flour, vinegar, paint, and ink. Carver is best known today for also inventing over 300 uses for peanuts. These included milk, oil, paper, and makeup. George's lasting reputation, though, did not come easily. As an African-American living at a time when slavery had just ended, he faced many unjust obstacles and dangers. However, through education and hard work, Carver achieved his goals. His passion for plants and people led him from slavery to success. All right, so now we're going to start to annotate. When you annotate something, you sort of highlight, underline, circle important things um, in the story or important words in the story or even phrases, sentences, um, any text features, any um, graphic features. Again, anything that you think the author put in the story um, that is important. All right, so here we go. The plant doctor, George Washington Carver was an agriculture scientist who became one of America's most well-known inventors. So I think it's important and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to um, just make a circle around the fact that George Washington Carver, and I'm actually gonna see if I can change the color, um, was a well-known inventor. I think that's important, okay? Um, another thing down here says, George certainly did not have an easy life. He was born into slavery, and I think maybe that's important, the fact that he was actually born into slavery. And as I mentioned, slavery is when a person is actually owned and, and they have to do things for free and they're not treated well. Okay, um, so as a child, it says that he moved. And here is a picture that I think is important. It already shows uh, this uh, farm right here. And it says that, and I'm just gonna underline this, and I'm gonna actually underline it with a different color. It says that Miss Car Mrs. Carver taught him how to read and write and how to work the land. So I think that that's important as well. Now, let's find out about uh, Mr. Carver. It says um, he was naturally curious. It even talked about some things that he loved. So I'm going to maybe get a different color here and I'm going to circle the fact that he loved art, music and science. I think that that's important. And he especially uh, was interested in farming. I think that's important. And I'm even going to put a star right here because that was especially important. And then let me see, I'm going to underline the fact that he had a knack, 
meaning he was very, really good at it, for understanding how to protect crops from pests and diseases. I think that that is important as well. And in fact, he did it so well that people soon started calling him the plant doctor. Now we know who this is, this man right here, and we know that they called him the plant doctor. All right, as we continue, we're just, again, annotating, highlighting, uh, underlining, circle, circling things that we think are important. Uh, let's see. How about at age 11, um, he left home because he wanted a better education. I'll even maybe circle that he faced a lot of discrimination over the years. I think that's important. Okay. But eventually he went to college and he went to college in Iowa. Maybe I can just uh, underline the fact that he was accepted at Iowa State College and that he was the first African-American to earn his master's degree in agriculture. And again, we know that that agriculture, and I'm even going to write a little note so I can remember that agriculture has to do with like the study of plants, um, crops, and even animals. I think that's important. So when you annotate, you underline, you highlight, you even write little notes, okay? All right, so we're going to keep on going. Oh, in Alabama, he taught, he taught farmers something. Let's see what he taught them. He believed it would be uh, that these cotton crops, crops would be made healthier if growing, if they, um, hold on, he believed it could be made healthier by growing other crops du during certain seasons. So basically, I'm going to drop another text box here, and I'm going to say that he told farmers to sort of rotate uh, their crops. So one year, you know, or a few years, they would grow cotton, and then they would grow something else like peanuts, soybeans, and sweet potatoes. And it says that by rotating these crops, I knew I saw that ro word rotated, by rotating these crops, and let me see if I can highlight by rotating these crops. Oh, nope, no highlighter. Okay, let's just underline, that's okay. All right, so by rotating these crops, it says that the soil became more productive and more productive, meaning they grew more things. So that was awesome. And it even says that the, the farmers were, and I'm going to circle the word, ecstatic. So they were really, really, really happy about the fact that they their crops were, were um, bringing about more food. All right. Now, it also says that he was a creative genius. He invented... And what did he invent? He had over 150 uses for things like sweet potatoes and flour and vinegar, paint and ink. And it also, which is important because I saw a picture of some peanuts and now I know why, it says that Carver was best known <laughs> for inventing over 300 uses of the peanuts. And then they give you some examples of some of those things. And I'm going to do this just to kind of make the highlight a little different. And of course, again, here is George Washington Carver. And again, um, he was best known for uh, making things out of peanuts. All righty. Now, let's see if we can answer a few questions about George Washington Carver now that we have actually annotated um, the text. Again, when you annotate, you underline, circle, even highlight. If you have a highlighter, you also uh, can, um, you know, put stars by things that are important. You can also write, um, make little text boxes, and you can actually put little notes there so that you can, when you come back, you'll be able to see things that are important. So let's see if we can answer these questions. Number one, it says, <clears throat> the plant doctor. Which of the following is not one of the crops George encouraged farmers to grow in Alabama? I'm just going to circle this and not because I think it's important. Was it soybeans, sweet potatoes, peanuts, or broccoli? So let's go back to the text 
to see if we can figure out what George actually encouraged them to grow. Oh, look right here. It says he encouraged farmers to grow peanuts, soybeans, and sweet potatoes. All right. So here's our answer. We went back to the text and we found the answer. So we know that he wanted them to grow these three things. So what did he not want them to grow? That would have been broccoli. Number two, based on what you know about George, which of the following was probably his favorite school subject? English, science, history, and recess. Well, if we think about this story and think about the fact that he um, was growing things and we know that uh, there was even this word here that said scientist, right? And he was an inventor. It even says here he was an agricultural scientist. Well, there it is right there in the text. I think the answer is a scientist or science. That's the subject. And number three, which of the following was George sometimes called during his lifetime? A tree hugger, the plant doctor, the flower child, the nutcracker. It says, which of the following was George sometimes called? I think I remember seeing that in the text, but I wanted to, to make sure. So I'm going to go back to the text. And I know I saw that. Oh, look right here. George soon became known in the area as the plant doctor. There is our answer. So you can see how you can annotate something. You can see how um, doing that, you will be able to highlight some important things in the story. And then you can see how you can uh, read some questions and actually go back. And then it makes it much easier to pick out the evidence and then answer your question. All righty. Thank you.